Hello there and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to focus on the IGCSE advanced concepts on both the 0580 paper and 0607 for Cambridge. So if you're aiming for those really, really top grades, then these are concepts that are often forgotten about, not taught that well, or topics that really need to focus on because they're usually assessed at that top level. Right, let's get started. So here, I'm going to look at the intersecting chord theorem. Again, this is actually related to a circle theorem that you should already be aware of. So I've just drawn a circle here and two intersecting chords. Remember, a chord is just a line that goes across the circle, but without necessarily going through the middle. Now, notice I've set it up here in the following way. And what we want to do, you can do this at home, you can actually try it out with a circle. I want to calculate AE, so if I highlight this in red here, and times that by EC, so let me highlight that in a different color, so in blue, then there's a relationship between when they're multiplied together and comparing it to the equivalence with the other chord. So if I do this in yellow, like so, if I multiply this yellow line and let's make this a darker blue line, like so. And if you multiply these together, what will happen is these two things are actually equal to each other. Now, the reason for that is actually a fact that we do know already on the course. Imagine I just draw a triangle here, and I draw a triangle here as well. Well, notice all three angles are actually the same here. These are vertically opposite angles, so these are the same. And if we actually look at this angle here and this angle here, they're on the same arc. And likewise, this is also true down here as well. So we have similar triangles and therefore they have to be in the same proportion. So AE times CE has to then equal DE times EB. You can probably see that by actually by looking at lengths of the chords in question. Now, how do they actually test you on this? Okay, this doesn't come up very often, but it is based on concepts you already know on the course. So let's do an easy question first of all. This comes from Corporate Maths. Then please do check out his work. It's fantastic. And what we're going to do here is use this idea to actually work out. Notice there's a slight mistake here. That should just say six centimeters. And we want to work out the length of BD in total. So the way we go about doing this is just comparing chords here. So notice we've got 5 and 3. So if we have 3 times 5, that's going to be equal to 6 times whatever the length of BY is. So let's just call that BY. And again, we can work backwards through the problem to work this out. So if we do this, we get M15 is equal to 6 times BY. And then we can just divide by 6 on both sides. So if we do that, we get 50 over 6 is equal to by. Of course, we can simplify this fraction by dividing by 3 top and bottom. That gives us then 5 over 2 or equal to 2.5 centimeters. Notice the reading of the question here. They don't just want by, but they actually want BD. So that's just going to be 6 plus 2.5 giving us 8.5 centimeters. There is a mistake in the mark scheme, which you'll see on the very next slide. Okay, we're actually looking for the whole length BD. So cool maths, watch out with those answers. And on to question five here. So AB and CD are chords that intersect at the point X. And this time it's a little bit trickier, a bit of ratio here. The ratio of A to X to X to B is the ratio two to five. The way I generally set this up is then I put in the information I have. Well, XB in the question is equal to 20. Here, I don't know what that is yet. And once you set it up like this, it's really straightforward to work out the missing value. So what do I do to five to get to 20? I multiply by four. What do I multiply two by? Well, I'm gonna do the same on both sides. And so this mystery number here is going to be eight centimeters. So let's pop that in. So they can combine this intersecting chord theorem with a couple of other topics. And now in order to work out dx here, we're going to do that same relationship. So eight times 20. So this first chord here is equal to 10 times dx. And now it's just a little bit of algebra to go through here to get to the final answer. So eight times 20 is 160. And this is going to be 10 lots of dx. And then to get the dx on its own, we divide by 10 on both sides. What's the opposite of timesing by 10? Dividing by 10. And if we do that on both sides, 
we will then get dx. Notice in this question, they just want dx, so this length here, and that's equal to 160 divided by 10, which gives me 16 centimeters. Making sure to put the units in to make sure you guarantee all three marks. So you can check the mark scheme there. Okay, so it goes through exactly the same process that I've done there. Notice they worked at the ratio a little bit differently. Now, on to my second circle theorem. So I'm focusing with circle theorems for the moment that's often missed out or often poorly understood. And that is the alternate segment theorem. Now, what is that alternate segment theorem? It always seems a little bit random. Uh, the key definition here, as you can see on the screen, is that the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle subtended in the opposite segments, i.e. this angle here, you have to go to the angle far away, so to speak, on the other side. And there is a very nice proof of this to actually show that this is the case. Again, I'm not gonna focus about that in today's video, okay? And a couple of other tangent ideas that you also need to know, but this is a more standard ideas that you should already be aware of. Now, I've got a nice exam question here. This is from the 0607 paper, which utilizes this kind of idea. So we've got angle RTB is equal to 70, and then we need to find RQT. We're actually looking for this angle here. And the only way you can really do this is by using the alternate segment theorem, which says that this angle here is equal to the angle subtended in the opposite segment. What does that mean in this case? Well, it means that this angle right over here is also equal to 70 degrees. And that the real top ends of the IGCSE courses, they will make sure you can only use this theorem to work out the problem. Now, of course, we haven't finished the problem at this point because we want to work out this angle. Now, this is back to some basic circle theorems. If you want more information on circle theorems, check out the video just above me. But we are going to use what's called cyclic quadrilaterals. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that this angle and this angle here add up to 180. So to work out the angle RQT, there we are. We do 180 minus the 70 giving us 110 degrees. So this could be the two marks that make the difference between that A and A star grade. And you can see if you don't spot the alternate segment theorem here, then you're gonna lose out on those two marks. Okay, there's the mark scheme for you as well. And on to my third topic here, which is special triangles, and then using them in a trigonometry problem. This is again, generally badly done by students. And this is something you can fix very quickly by memorizing these exact values on the screen. So knowing that sine 45 is equal to one over root two, or that tan 30 is equal to one over root three, they're very, very helpful. And they will speed you up in questions, even on the 0580 course, while you have a calculate always, it speeds it up. And also if you need to write it as an exact value. Now, where does this triangle come from? The one in blue, so the way I tend to present it in class is I draw an equilateral triangle with sides of two. That means if it's equilateral, each angle needs to be equal to 60. This is 60 and this is 60. Then we drop what's called a perpendicular down here to give us a right angle. That means that this length here becomes one and this angle up here, because it's half a 60, is 30 degrees. And if we use Pythagoras, we can actually work out this height is equal to root three. So this is where this triangle comes from. And this is the way to derive it if you get really stuck and you don't know these exact values off by heart. Now, where is this actually useful to you? Well, I've got another question for you. Again, it's based on trigonometry. And the first question is really straightforward here, solving this equation. Now, without a calculator, you have to know these exact values. So if you go back here, sine 30 is equal to a half. Therefore, if sine x is equal to a half between zero and 90, then x must just be equal to 30 degrees. This can just give you a very easy mark. Uh, this is from a 0607 paper, just by knowing that fact, one mark, boom. Now for part B, again, this applies to both courses here, then they push this understanding slightly. So we've got sine x is equal to minus a half, and we want to find all the solutions between zero and 360. Now this is where you need to know your trigonometry graphs. So you need to know your basic sine graph and your cosine graph as well, 
And remember, it goes up to 90 for one, down to 180 for zero, then 270 down here, and then 360 here. So you do need to know where these are. And by knowing these special triangles, you can actually work out the other answers quite easily. So let's use the answer that we've just used here. So if I do this on my graph at 30 degrees, which is roughly here, could be a little bit further along, this is my answer of 0 0.5. Now the advanced concept here is making sure you can use the symmetry of graphs to actually work out the other answers. Notice we want to work with minus 0 0.5. So if I go all the way across, notice it hits the graph here and it hits the graph here as well. So if I go upwards there and upwards there, and I can use this idea of symmetry, this gap here in black is 30 degrees and that's equal to this gap here because the graph is completely symmetrical. So this is 180 here, this length in black is 30, then that value here is equal to 210, 180 plus 30. Likewise, if we use our sketch, this black length here is 30, and we want to go backwards from 360, so 360 minus 30 will be equal to 330 degrees. So those are our two answers here, so let me write those in, and two mark question, 210 degrees and 330 degrees. So by being able to use those exact values and then apply that to some general trigonometric equations is a really useful concept to understand at home and also good for IB and A level later on. So those are the answers there for you. And then you can see where you pick up maybe one mark instead. If you're liking this video so far, then please do like and please do subscribe to the channel and just let me know what kind of videos will be useful to you as you are revising for the exams. Okay, and on to my next concept here. So we're gonna go into some algebra and this is rearranging with multiple X's. So I'm gonna go through an example together here. And this is a four mark question. So there's quite a lot of marks available for you. And then we'll do an exam question from 0580. So we want to make X the subject of the formula. So I'm just gonna write out our equation and our strategy. So this is the key strategy. Whenever you get more than one X when you're rearranging, we want all things with X, so all the X's on left-hand side, everything else on the right. So you'll see what I mean in a moment when I say all X's on that left-hand side, but we want everything else on the right hand side. Before we can do that, let's just expand the brackets out here. So we get a times x is ax, a times minus b is equal to minus ab. I'm gonna write out the right hand side. Now I'm gonna follow that principle that I've just mentioned here. So I'm gonna do this in one step. I'm going to add a, b on both sides. I'm also gonna minus bx from both sides. If I do this, well, this cancels here, this cancels here, and we've got the minus bx. So we get ax minus bx. And then on the other side of the equation, well, this is canceled with this. We've still got the ab, so we get a squared plus ab. If you want to do that in two steps rather than one, that's absolutely fine as well. Now, once you've got that step, then don't forget your factorizing into single brackets. And this is often forgotten about in these kinds of questions. So they both have an X in common, so we can take out that common factor and then we work backwards. So what do we multiply AX, uh, X by to get AX, just A. What do we multiply X by to get minus BX, minus B. And then we can just put this over here. We could factorize this as well. That could also be useful. Uh, but we just want x the subject. That's what we care about. The reason we've done this, we've now got only one term in x. And then we do the standard step after this, which is divide by the bracket. So we're going to divide by a minus b on both sides. This cancels and we get exactly what we want. x equals, perfect. And then we get a squared plus a b over a minus b. 
b, like so. If you wanted to, you could also factorize out the a at the top here. Again, this is not required for the question, but you could do that to make it a little bit neater in terms of the algebra. Okay, let's quickly have a look then at this question. So this comes from a very recent 2022 paper on 0580, and we want to make x the subject of the formula. Again, slightly different because we start with a fraction here, but the same strategy applies. We want all the x stuff on the left-hand side and everything else on the right. So let's go and do that. So the way we'll start here, again, you can do the expansion of brackets first if you so wish. We're going to multiply by our x on both sides. I generally don't like fractions, so let's get rid of that. So we get on the left-hand side xy, x times y is xy. And remember, this cancels here, leaving us with 5 brackets p minus 2x. Now we're going to expand our brackets. We could have done this at the start as well. So we get xy is equal to 5p minus 10x. And now that crucial step, which is to get all the x's on that left-hand side. The way we do this is the opposite of minusing 10x is adding 10x. So let's do that on both sides. That gives us then xy plus 10x. And because this cancels, we're left with just 5p, which is good. And have a think at home, what do we do next? It is the factorizing into a single bracket. So notice they have x in common, and then we work backwards. So what do you do to x to get to xy? Just times by y. What do you do to x to get to 10x? Just plus 10. And now we've got it in the way that we want, just one term in x. And that means now we can divide by the bracket. So divide by y plus 10 on both sides. If we do that, this cancels. Fantastic. We get what we want. x equals. And then we just get 5p over y plus 10. Notice we can't cancel further here because we have a plus in the denominator and so we don't have a common factor to divide through. So our final answer for all those lovely four marks, enjoy them when you get them in the exam, is 5p over y plus 10. So you can have a look at the mark scheme, even if you do get the very final answer wrong, you can check the mark scheme also for all those method marks that you can gather. And a topic that I've found students generally also get quite tricky is bearings. So if you need some practice on bearings, I go through bearings for about 40, 50 minutes, really going through what a bearing is and then doing lots of exam questions, getting you ready for the exams.